to the 2000 commencement ceremonies at Fridley High School. I would like to first of all introduce those people who are sitting here on the podium. Uh, to your right, board member Mr. Larry Johnson. Board member, would you please stand as, and uh, let me introduce you that way. 
uh, board member Mr. Fred Bischke, school board member Sandra Rudolph, school board member Greg Rosholt, school board member Kim Sampson, and our school board chairman, Mr. Gordon Backland, our superintendent, Dr. Marianne Nelson, our speaker for this evening, Mr. Craig Lungstrom, and the assistant principal at Fridley High School, Mr. Dave Webb. Now I would like to introduce Emily Wyden, who is the president of our student council for a welcome. Emily. School board administration, staff, parents, families, friends, and graduates. Welcome to the commencement ceremony of the class of 2000. Graduation is a time of recognition and it has been in the tradition of Fridley High School to compile top 10 lists for every occasion. So I took this opportunity to combine these two great activities. Here it is, the top 10 recognitions for seniors that otherwise wouldn't get recognized. Number 10, would the members of the Fridley baseball team please stand up? Stand up guys, I know you're out there. There we go, stay standing, stay standing. Congratulations, fellows. You set a new standard for excellence for the upcoming teams and a very unique record. You'll have to ask the members of the team what I'm referring to, if you know what I mean. Thanks, guys. Number nine. Would Ruth and Chris please stand up? Where's Ruth and Chris? All right, there they are. I'd like to take this moment to recognize these students for the utter disregard to school property, specifically the media center TPing that happened last night. <laughs> number eight, please stand up if your home phone number is now or has in the past been on Mr. Webb's speed dial. Hmm, I've never seen Derek McCown and Sammy Vagovich be so shy. Stand up guys, there you go. Number seven, would everyone who has never had a crush on Ms. Olson or Mr. Redmond please stand up? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Number six, would everyone who didn't like Mexican haystack, haystack and Charlie Brown pie please stand up? No, I didn't think there was anyone. Number five, please stand up if you took animal behaviors and your pet actually lived through the whole quarter. Way to go. Sorry, Sarah and Matt, you guys are out on that one. Number four, would everyone who actually needed a pass to get by the parking attendant please stand up? Okay, of course, none of us ever skipped school or went out to lunch. We just never tried, right? So we wouldn't know. All right, number three, please stand up if you never finished the mile in gym class. We all did, that's good job, guys. All right, <laughs> number two, would everyone who's taken building traits and called it an actual class please stand up? <laughs> all right. And how about all of you that have scammed the school by taking it for two years in a row? Anybody? All right. Way to go. And the number one recognition. Would all the students that are graduating in the class of 2000 please stand up? Congratulations! Congratulations, ladies and gentlemen. We may be the last group of seniors to ever graduate from this building because we're the last class that didn't have grad standards. <laughs> you guys can sit. Welcome to the Class of 2000 Commencement Ceremony.
We'd like to call forward our first student speaker, Ms. Alexa Skirka. Family, friends, Madam Superintendent, school board members, and especially the class of 2000. As I began to think of what I wanted to say tonight, I thought, what is the class of 2000? Is it the turkey gravy, a Mexican haystack, snow days, or spring break 2000? Frilly football with Randy Shaver and subs, prom on the Mississippi, mousetrap cars, or balsa wood bridges, grease, or Midsummer Night's Dream, Drumline, or Girls Basketball Winning Conference, Mr. Lou, an intro to modern fiction, the retirement of four great teachers, winning our first homecoming in eight years, <laughs> or is it the friendships that we have made since being at Frilly High School? Friendship, as defined in Webster's Dictionary, means friendly, feeling, or attitude. But I think this poem depicts friendship in a far better manner. We're joined in a friendship that time cannot sever. With bonds we have built, we'll remain friends forever. We're welded in spirit, attached by our hearts, and fused by the feeling that friendship imparts. We're tied by emotions, connected by dreams, Reinforced by our hopes, unified by extremes. No longer a function of time or of space. Our love is a substance that life won't replace. No matter how distant, we'll always endeavor to sense the full meaning of friendship forever. So as we leave each other tonight, even though our paths will follow different directions, let us keep our friendship alive in our hearts forever. Our next student speaker is Emily Wyden. As I look out on all of my classmates on this night that marks the culmination of our high school years, I think of all the things we've experienced together. Remember back in middle school when we had homeroom every day and if we were good, we could earn honor passes and get tiger tokens and go to the cafeteria to play bingo? Remember the swimming unit in gym class when the boys and girls split up into different classes so we wouldn't be self-conscious? Remember walking to the high school auditorium to hear the real Rudy and Summer Sanders speak? Remember coming to high school and being nervous every time we crossed a senior in the hall? Remember the bomb threat when we had to walk over to the middle school and spend half the day crammed in the middle school gym? Remember sports? Remember learning the Staying Alive dance in Mr. Frank's 11th grade gym class? Remember all the things that happened this year? Homecoming, Sadie's, Snow Week and Prom. I remember these things as if they were but brief moments ago. They're fresh on my mind. I can see the expressions on faces. I can hear the laughter. I can feel the excitement. It's a funny thing. It seems like forever ago, yet it seems like just yesterday. Time has a funny way of causing us to lose perspective. It's as if the older I get, the faster time moves, and the more quickly events slide by. All too soon, it's as if today is but a memory. The movie Dead Poet Society popularized the phrase carpe diem, or seize the day. In the movie, Robin Williams leads a poetry group and encourages the boys in the group to seize the day, live in the now, be fully alive. Or as psychologist Abraham Maslow once said, I can feel guilty about the past, apprehensive about the future, but only in the present can I act. 
The ability to be in the present moment is a major component in men of mental wellness. Jim Elliott, a missionary to the Aka Indians, tells the story of when he was 21 and he decided to take a personality test after a girl he was dating started telling everyone that he didn't have a personality. He received a packet in the mail and answered the first question. And the first question asked him to draw three circles, one representing the past, one representing the present, and one representing the future. He thought about it for a second, and then he drew a medium-sized circle representing the past, a small circle representing the present, and an extra large circle representing the future. When he received the test results back, he was told that he was so preoccupied with the past and so obsessed with the future that he was neglecting all that was taking place in the present. The intriguing thing about this story is that Jim Elliott, the author, did just as he suggested. He spent his life living for the moment. His future looked bright. He was an intelligent, young, newlywed man who was a missionary aviator. And yet, he lived each day taking risks and doing compassionate acts to better humanity. One day, he was flying a plane full of food to the Alka Indians, which were a tribe of headhunters. And the next thing he knew, the very people he was trying to help killed him. In just a moment's time, his life was ended. But the first thing that people will say about Jim Elliott's life is that he lived it to the fullest, and he never let an opportunity pass him by. I learned a new lesson from Jim's story. Seizing the day can make you just a little bit better as a person. His life taught us that we shouldn't let this precious moment slip into the past, not allowing ourselves to experience life to the fullest. How many times have we seen the lives of people all around us be abruptly and unexpectedly cut short? Just a few nights ago, a Fridley High School student's father unexpectedly passed away. A couple weeks ago, Malik Seely, a Star Timberwolves player, was tragically killed in a drunk driving accident. About a year ago, two sick-minded kids invaded the halls of Columbine High School and robbed many innocent high schoolers like ourselves of the chance to graduate and the chance to live out their dreams. We need to be sure that when today, when this moment passes by, we'll be glad that we made the most out of it. That we not only saw love, excitement, joy, and happiness, but that we experienced it. Michael W. Smith wrote a song in honor of Cassie Bernal, one of the girls that was killed in the Columbine shootings. The lyrics of the chorus are, this is your time, this is your dance. Live every moment, leave nothing to chance. Sail in the seas, drink of the deep, embrace the mystery of all you can be. 50 years from now, it won't matter how much money you have, where you live, or what your job title is. No matter what you've accomplished, there will be one thing you can't control, and that's time. You can't buy time. It's an irretrievable commodity that can't be preserved or created. Time moves forward with an inevitability that we can't control, that we can't touch. Our yesterdays can never be recovered. They're forever etched in history. The greatest wisdom that we can take with us today is to seek the healthy balance of learning from the past, planning for the future, while living fully in the present. To seize each day, each moment, each personal encounter as a precious gift that it is. To, leave, to live each moment fully alive. I'd like to read the last two paragraph of, paragraphs of Jim Elliott's article entitled, Today Will Happen Only Once. Do you grasp the truth that this particular day will happen only once? This marvelous day filled with so many good things, the smell of approaching rain or the scent of cologne, the taste of cookies and cream ice cream or fajitas, an unexpected phone call from an old friend, the opportunity to encourage a neighbor who's lonely, the sunset, the flicker of a candle, the sounds of the waves, the waves on a beach, the lizard that climbs up the side of the tub while you're soaking in a hot bath and licks the ivory soap and begins blowing bubbles. Don't laugh, this actually happened to me right after I graduated. Life happens so fast. Each day and every week are filled with unique opportunities and wonderful occasions. When they're gone, you can never get them back. So look for those one-of-a-kind opportunities. Each Enjoy each moment and take pleasure in the many blessings of today because it will happen only once. In closing, I'd like to share a quote by Barbara DeAngelis. The journey between who you once were and who you are now becoming is where the dance of life really takes place. Class of 2000, it's our turn on the dance floor. This is our moment. 
this graduation ceremony, the all night party, seeing all these familiar faces for one last time and having fun together as the class of 2000 of Fridley High School. Let's make this moment one to remember. Our third student speaker is Eric Adolfson. You sought for strength, and difficulties made you strong. We desired wisdoms, and problems were given for you to solve. You needed courage, and your triumph over danger protected you. You dreamed a dream, and in your hands, your dreams created something new. Those dreams can design a new life, they can help someone in need, and they can help create a better world. High school, whatever it meant to you, it is a place that you'll never forget. You were full of memories of teachers, friends, events, and change. You never forget the faces of those who picked you up when you stumbled or loved you when you felt empty. You grew, you changed, and you're most likely to be a much different person when you first walked through those doors four years ago. Why? Because you're good enough, you're smart enough, and gall darn it, don't you look great in these gold, shiny graduation medallions. <laughs> Tonight marks the ending of these four years, a completion of your compulsory education. You have received everything that you needed, Every blessing has been bestowed upon you, and every prayer recited. Let the presence of tonight sink into your bones, and allow your soul the freedom to sing and dance. Today is your day of accomplishment, a time to celebrate, love, and cry. Nevertheless, may it be filled with joy. It is there for each and every one of us. My advice for you is to encourage those to follow an example for those who preceded you, and to set an example for those to follow. For each of you, Fridley Senior High School has been a place of wonderful possibilities. The standard of excellence is there for each of you, a place of possibilities. A place where you have developed potential and prepared for the future. But now, the time has come to venture out. The time has arrived to put your hard work and sacrifice and dedication that transforms these possibilities into reality. I honestly believe that our better days are yet to come. I believe this because I've seen how far we've come. We've grown up together. We were friends together. We've even dreamed together. A Yale teacher once said, whatever you dream you can do, begin it. For today has power, boldness, and magic in it. I say to you tonight, be bold in your dreaming. Be bold in your living. Be bold in your caring and your compassion, your humanity, and then, and then you'll sit back at your grandchildren's graduation a half a century from now and you look at the tapestry of your life and find that it was good. And that will be the greatest success of it all. Let there be peace within your heart and in your life, and trust your highest power that you're exactly where you were meant to be. Never forget the infinite possibilities that are born of faith. Be content to know that you have a purpose. The class of 2000. May your path be bright and full of light wherever you go, and may darkness flee at your command. May the desires of your heart come true, May goodness, kindness, and mercy come your way. And may you continue to gain in wisdom and grow. Thank you, congratulations, and God bless each and every one of you. Good evening. My name is Mary Ann Nelson, and it is my distinct pleasure to be able to introduce our speaker tonight. But first, I wanted to make a couple of comments. This is our 42nd commencement program here at Fridley High School, and 179 seniors are graduating tonight. Everyone in this room is feeling a lot of emotion, a lot of pride in what you have accomplished, and we're doing our best tonight to pat you on the back and say good luck in your future. I want to say you've left behind a special mark in Fridley. For the first time in history in Fridley, we think this is the first time in history, we've had five seniors who are graduating with a perfect GPA of 4.0, all A's, at Fridley High School. Wow. And Mr. Deere is going to read those names. There are 34 
students total out of the senior class who graduated with a 3.75 grade point average, and that means in our language all A's and maybe just a few B's. There are 20 additional seniors who graduated with high honors between a 3.5 and a 3.74, and 34 more who graduated with honors having better than a 3.0. So all told, almost one half of this class graduated with a B average or better at Fridley High School, class of 2000. <laughs> wow. 45% of you not only did well at your studies, but you also participated in men's or women's athletics. And Mr. Deer and Steve George and I were trying to add up the data because we don't have a way of compiling this fast. But we think about 75% of our seniors not only participated in men or women, men's or women's athletics, but also all of the other co-curricular sports, such as music, art, drama, key club, just to name a few. And this is a special achievement, graduates, because research says over and over, the key to future success is not only good grades, but participating in those extra activities, too. So hats off to you. I do have a special request tonight, and I know it's warm in here, and I know it's a little awkward, but graduates, I hope you will not forget to thank your parents and your teachers and all of the Fridley staff who worked so hard to help you get where you are. And even if it is a little awkward, I'm going to ask all of the parents, and I see a whole host of our Fridley teachers, employees, cooks, anybody who has had a role in helping to educate these graduates and the parents, would you stand where you are so we can recognize you? Please, would you stand? <laughs> Speaking of future success, I'd like to say something to some of you graduates who might be thinking, and just a few of you maybe, boy, you know, I feel good about being here tonight, but I kind of wish I had worked a little bit harder on grades, or I wish I had participated in that other sport I didn't sign up for. There's a message here tonight, and that is don't give up on yourself. It's never too late to turn it around and become a huge success and achieve your dreams. You've, you've accomplished the first step. I want to tell you a little bit about tonight's speaker. Craig Lungstrom is a Fridley High School graduate from the class of 1976. Craig is a symbol of someone who never gave up on himself when he ran into roadblock after roadblock. I teased the board members when we introduced him earlier before we walked out and I said he's one of our most successful graduates and probably one of our richest. I'm probably embarrassing him. Craig attended North Hennepin Community College for a year after he graduated from Fridley. Then he enlisted in the Army. After his discharge, he went back to college, but he says in his bio, I didn't finish college with a degree. I left college to take a job with Motorola. He knew Bill Gates and Michael Dell when they were little known but had big dreams, and how many of us don't know how successful they became? Since college and taking that job with Motorola, Craig has started or founded and sold four different companies. At one point in his life when more than 10 bankers said, no, we will not give you a loan for your startup business, he kept going, he kept trying, and finally one did say yes and the rest is history. In short, Craig never gave up and he is now one of Fridley's most successful alumni. Craig is now president of Barcode Service Source. His business has doubled every quarter since its start in 1970, 96, 1996. His company now earns 17 million in revenues. And he said tonight, this is the first time he's been back at Fridley High School since he graduated in 1976. Let's welcome Craig Lungstrom. pretty kind words here tonight. I do need to share a few things here. A lot of things have changed here at Fridley High School and a lot of things, or a few things have stayed the same. I know that when I called here trying to get some information how many 
people are here today. My graduating class was about 650 people. Uh, we only had 10 through 12 through the school. But a name kept on coming out in the background, Shirley Nelson. So I couldn't believe, after my 24 years, you're surely still around. So I know back 24 years ago, Shirley ran the school, and I'm sure she's still running it today. <laughs> About the only other person on the list was uh, Jim Peterson. Um, I understand Jim has recently retired. I don't remember the question, but I still remember the answer. That's all you need to do is tell him. So um, I was very nervous here tonight. Why am I coming back here to uh, Fridley High School? Last year I gave a speech at uh, St. Thomas for the graduate program. I'm pretty active out in the Wyzetta School District because that's where I live. So I'm very often asked to come back in and speak to uh, high school kids or grade school kids about technology in the future. But tonight, knowing I'm coming back to Fridley, driving through the parking lot, I'm getting this big old knot in my stomach. I'm going, oh, geez, what's this all about? <clears throat> Marching up here, my, my knot got a lot larger. I'm still thinking Mr. Myers is around here ready to swap me on the knuckles or send me to detention or something. So uh, I understand he's no longer here either. So my generation is a little bit different than the millennium generation. Um, the basketball coach up there, I forget his name, Mr. George. I was here when that streaker streaked in 73, and I know who it was. <laughs> so, but again, I, I thought I would be the last person here addressing this, uh, or coming back to the high school to give a commencement address. So um, I never dreamed I'd be delaying your celebration, so I will be very brief. I was asked to address this class tonight, and I cannot figure out why. Uh, I was never been the most likely to do anything in my life. I've never been told I was going places. I've never been told I was the best at anything. In the golfing term, I never was told I was the man. I certainly was never an honor student. In fact, my high school education was rather uneventful. I choose not to remember my GPA, but I think, let's give me some credit, I think it was about 235. I know what you're thinking, why am I up here talking to you people? I will tell you a few things that I was told. I was told I would never play contact sports at a freak industry in 1975. Well, I proved the doctors wrong, and to date I've completed about 50 marathons, and I missed the Olympic trial marathon in 1982 by seven seconds. Seven seconds over 26 miles equates to nothing, but I just could not find seven seconds. I was also told by my college counselors I didn't quite fit in the current job market. But on the bright side, McDonald's was starting a new management training program. <laughs> Within two years after that statement, I founded North Star CompuServe here in Minneapolis in 1986, and I sold it in 1998. At the time I sold it, we were the largest privately independent computer repair facility in North America. I had over 200 employees and revenues of about $25 million. So that's what I was told I wasn't supposed to do. I am here tonight to share thoughts on education, work, and friendship. I view that I graduate at the perfect time, but I think you're graduating at the perfect time. I graduated when the computer edge was evolving. Who actually knew how computers and technology would actually change our lives? And I know it's hard for you guys to believe it. There was life before the internet. I can sum up my first 10 years of post-Fridley graduation on a single sheet of paper. I knew the importance of that piece of paper, my college diploma. I knew it was worth about 25 to 30 percent more in annual compensation to me. I knew it was the fast track up the corporate ladder. And I knew I wanted the cash. And I struggled through three community colleges, and I never graduated. Two technical schools, I graduated from one. Two universities, never graduating. I stopped six credits short of graduating at the University of Texas to pursue a career with Motorola on an Apple Macintosh project. What I did do is I'm very proud of the, of the fact that I put myself through school. I paid my own way. I had more jobs than I care to highlight, but mowing grass was by far my highlight. <laughs> I cut grass four days a, work, a week. I worked at Motorola Friday night midnight to Saturday noon, Saturday night midnight, Sunday noon. Then I worked back at a strip mall at a running shop four days a week. Between work and school, I made time to run 125 to 150 miles a week to and ride my bike over 200 miles a week 
so I could pay for my education and pursue an Olympic dream. Throughout this time, I've learned a lot about people, business, and life. A lot of it is what you make of it. And you do have control of your own destiny, and you have to create your own breaks. Life isn't always fair, but opportunities are always there if we choose to look hard enough. I'm going to fast forward my life for 10 years. It's 1986. I found myself living in Austin, Texas. Oil went bust, and my wife just lost her job. Motorola was no longer exciting and challenging to me. I was away from home for 10 years. I miss my siblings and my parents. After all, they weren't getting any younger, and I wanted to spend some quality time with them. I had this dream. I wanted to start my own repair company in Minneapolis, my older brother, Ken. My wife and I sold our house in Texas and moved back to Minneapolis. In 1986, I started a company with no money. I don't know how I did it, but I can say my parents recognized potential. I was about eight years old, and we all have these childhood stories. I was eight years old. There was this vacant lot by my parents' house. There was this big old poplar tree or cottonwood tree out there. Obviously, that tree has got no value, nothing. Went to my dad's garage, stole a couple of my dad's pieces of wood, nailed it on this tree, and I sold this tree for 25 cents. I sold it as a tree fort to this person. I know it's not a lot of money, but at 25 cents, when I was eight years old, it seemed like a lot of money to me. I think from that moment on, my, my parents realized I could do anything if I put my mind to it. So in 1986, I borrowed $2,000 from my parents because they always said ask. And I thought that's what my parents were for anyway, so they said, borrow me money. So my, my parents supported my decision and believed in my ability to be successful. I had this idea of creating this mail-order computer repair company. It was an idea that was never done before. With this $2,000 I borrowed, <clears throat> I mailed letters into a database of every computer dealer in the United States. Within 10 days, I was working 16 to 18 hours a day. Within 30 days, I had over 80% response from this mailing piece. I sold them something. I was very busy and very tired. I needed some employees, and I didn't know who I could really trust. I called up a few friendly ex-classmates. It was the winter when I came back up here, so there were a few people in construction, so they had summer or winters off. So I called these people. I paid them $6 an hour cash, and I cooked this guy two meals a day. Well, meals came into play because we started the business out of our rented duplex. So my wife. We were in our duplex about six months. My wife came home. She had a real job. And she came home one day and saw our house in total chaos. Our bedroom was our shipping and receiving zone. So anything that came in or out went through our bedroom. Well, I had three men my wife had never seen before running through our bedroom. <laughs> Needless to say, uh, she uh, didn't appreciate everybody knowing so much about her. So within about six months, we moved to Columbia Heights in 1987. At that time, I hired my brother Kent and my best friend from Texas. <clears throat> Once I hired these people, it was the foundation of good friendship and the, a great success story. I never had time to actually balance my checkbook. All I knew was I was working hard, we kept on throwing money in, and hopefully the bank wouldn't call us and say, hey, you don't have any money left. So I hired this guy with an MBA degree, Robert, and Robert came in within about 25 minutes, he balanced our checkbook and says, hey, you have $37,000 in cash. So I'm thinking, wow. So I got my first paycheck that day. And that day, and that day I paid my older brother back for all of his extra work. And he received a $5 raise also. And my friend Robert did too. Shortly after that, we relocated to Fridley in 1989. At the time we were in Fridley, we had about 100 to 125 people. 1993, we moved to New Hope and about 50,000 square feet. Five years later, I sold North Star CompuServe and started something else. It wasn't always this rosy. Um, we had sales of about a million dollars a month and we were losing money. I couldn't quite figure out why. Actually, I knew why, because if you had a pulse and looking for a job, we'd hire you. Well, that led to a lot of big time problems. So since I was my responsibility for these people, I decided to take initiative. So I got rid of 28 people in one day. My best friend in high school, which was my first employee, was the first to go. He didn't really understand why I was letting him go, but it was the best thing I could do at that time. And yes, we still are very good friends today. From that moment on, I relied on experts to help run my business. Um, I called a lot of Fridley High School people that were in accounting and attorneys and asked these people to really participate in my business because I didn't know everything, unlike you guys. 
So over the last 11 years, I kept on trying to figure out, I need, I didn't have any money, I'm trying to get money. A bank will only give you money when you don't need it. Well, I needed it, no bank could give it to me. I did the bank circuit, as Mary was saying. So the 11th banker, finally, he believed in me. He said, I believe in you, Craig, and let's go for it. So over the last 11 or 12 years I've been with this particular banker, and I've followed this guy over his whole banking career, and I've deposited about 120 to $150 million in this guy's bank. He took a risk on me back then, and he's still getting rewarded for it today. I've got a couple real quick things, and it's hot, and we're leaving. Um, I've always said, if I have a quotation in life, it's you do not have to be the smartest person in the world. You just need to hang out with them. <laughs> in the spring of 1988, I read this story about this businessman in Dallas newspaper. And he sold his company to General Motors for $4 billion. Well, this is a brick and mortar company, not a dot com. So brick and mortar companies have actual buildings and infrastructure and products, unlike dot coms today. But anyways, $4 billion in 1988 was a lot of money. Um, and he, this guy was quoted, the quote in the paper was said, every time he picks up the phone, he charges $100 a minute to talk to people. Well, I wanted to talk to this guy, but I knew his rates, I couldn't afford it. So I decided I figured I'd get his attention, so I put $300 cash in an envelope and sent it to him and said, I, only want, I want seven minutes of his time. Seven minutes was, uh, $300 for seven minutes was about a third of his rate, so I figured I'm coming out ahead. So I fired off this letter, and lo and behold, I got this, this little guy called me back up on the phone, and he says, son, this is H. Ross Perot. I received your letter, and I'd like to meet you. So I'm going, wow, and now I got this little text and calling me son, and he wants to meet with me. If you don't know who Ross Perot is, he's the big guy with the sucking sound for NAFTA, and he also was in a couple of ill-fated presidential election campaigns years ago. I was trying to figure out what's a small-time guy from Fridley going to say to this big billionaire? He charges $36,000 an hour. Wow, that's a lot of money. I'd like to work for him for a few hours. Anyways, I left for Dallas the next morning. He sent his limousine to pick me up. His driver told me at the airport, Ross cannot meet with me today. Very discouraged, I went back home to Minneapolis. By the time I got back home to the office, there was a call from Mr. Perot in my voicemail. He said, son, can you come back the next day? I promise I'll meet with you. So I did. I jumped back on the plane the next morning, head back down to Dallas to see this man. After a few brief introductions, I asked him, my seven, I, had, I wanted to know what success meant to this guy. Actually, I mean, I was paying seven, I was paying $300 for seven minutes of this time. I had to make it go quick. Well, before a few questions were asked, I looked at my watch. I said it. I was trying to be honorable. Went off. I stopped the conversation mid-sentence. I said, I, got, I have to leave. He goes, well, what do you mean you got to leave? You got to be kidding. I said, no. I promised you I'd only take seven minutes of your morning. He laughed and said he knew the boss. And, well, that day I spent five hours with Mr. Perot. I'm going to share with you a few of his thoughts. He said, be a man of your word, be honest with others, be honest with yourself, and you'll be successful. He talked about believe in yourself. We have the ability to succeed. You must find good people, ask people their opinions, and retain these people. You build a good business and friendships around good people. Business is only as good as the management employees it keeps. I've been very fortunate to find these good people early on in my life. I've got a few people now that have followed me through three companies in 11 years. He also told me, continue your education. You're never too old or too smart to stop learning, or in his case, too rich. He goes to seminars all the time, business workshops and whatever else. So he's got to pay to go to these things. So he said, you have to read. I personally read about 20 business publications a week, about 15, 20 newspapers a week. You have to continue to learn, know what's going on in the world. He said, hire your own team on your own beliefs. Don't settle for anything letter, better don't settle for anything less than the best and check your ego at the door. He said, list your personal goals, life ambitions, and business goals on a piece of paper. This is a record that you can constantly go back on to see why your times are not going well. He said, failure is a part of life. What's most important is how you recover from it. I know I've failed repeated, repeatedly, and each time I learn a lot more about myself and others. When I find myself in chaos, I go back to my piece of paper. It really keeps my life in balance. He said, listen to people. They actually know more about their business than you do. I think I'm a good listener. My wife's not here, so 
She says, I'm not a good listener. Well, I think I am. That's all that matters to me, I suppose. We negotiate the rest. But when I listen to my employees, it tells me what's going on. And I need to know. My last thing I have to say about Mr. Pro is, when I got up to leave after five hours, he gave me $300 in cash back. And he goes, son, you need this more than I do, which was very true. <laughs> but I decided to donate that. I donated that $300 to a Dallas charity in, his, in Mr. Pro's name. He called me later on that week to thank me. OK, so that's my Mr. Pro deal. But I'm still trying to figure out, why did, you, why did people ask me to come here today? I, I'm, I mean, I believe in myself and I believe in people. I guess that's my only message. I'm a dreamer, a planner, I'm a person driven by the passion of success. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm driven by the words, it can't be done and you'll never succeed. I'm, I'm a survivor, I think we are all survivors. I have three proudest moments in my life. My wife has put up with me for 18 years. It's an accomplishment, I think, nowadays. I have two wonderful kids, and I'm thankful for friends and family that got me where I am today. Without their guidance and support my ability to dream, I would not be here. Okay, I'm, I'm just about done. Give me a minute. Times are really changing. I ran the demographics from 24 years ago to where they are today, and I'll just share with you a few things. Divorce rate, or single parent families from 1976 to the year 2000 is up 26% in Anoka County. Divorce rate's up 17%. The only bright side I could find here is average family income was up 42%, but housing prices in Anoka County have doubled. Current experts say that over the next five years, advances in technology, innovations, intervention will surpass my generation, the previous 24. As this class of 2000s here, you must prepare for this. You need to continue your education as a start in the right direction. You have to be able to compete in the world economy. You need more education. Stay in school. In closing, I'd like to challenge you with a president from a very, from a quotation from a very controversial president. You must never be satisfied with success. You should never be discouraged by failure. Failure can be sad, but the greatest sadness is not try and fail, but failing to try. Uh, that was Richard M. Nixon years ago. Parents, I have something for you. Do what you can to support this graduating class. They have trying times ahead of them. They need your love and support. Thank you, class of 2000. Enjoy your night and be safe. This evening, before we, this evening, before we get started, I'd like to uh, recognize uh, some people First of all, uh, in the corner over here, uh, in the grand or in the uh, bleachers, we have a group of uh, very important people, and that is the faculty and staff of the students and uh, here at Fridley High School. And I'd like you to please stand uh, for some recognition, please. I would also like to uh, recognize those faculty and staff members who have had anything to do with the class of 2000 who are here from Stevenson or Hayes or the middle school. Uh, would you please stand? Thank you very much. Would like to just mention too that we have some retirements this year that are very important and are going to leave some large gaps in our faculty. Uh, Al Farms, Jim Peterson, Sonia Boland, Larry Senrick, and Ann Teske, as well as Ginger Lindquist and Marilyn Schoneman. Uh, are any of you here, would you please stand and let's recognize you, please. What I would like to do now is to look at the class of 2000, and I want to acknowledge some academic achievements in this class. Uh, as Dr. Nelson mentioned, we had five co-valedictorians, five young people who had a perfect grade point average of 4.0 straight A's over a four-year period. And we've been introducing them alphabetically. I'm going to start from the back of the alphabet, and when I introduce you, would you please stand? Emily Wyden, Ian Stifel, 
John Shrupp, Jay Perry, and Nina Deep. Now I'd like to introduce those, introduce those who have graduated with highest honors, those students who have a 3.75 to a 4-point GPA. Uh, would those students wearing our stoles please rise? Thank you very much for your hard work and for your wonderful accomplishments. Now I'd like to introduce those students with high honors. They have graduated with GPAs of 3.50 to 3.74. Would you please stand? Again, a tremendous accomplishment. And finally, for those who are graduating with honors, who have graduated with a GPA of a 3.0 to a 3.49, would you please stand? Thank you very much. Would the members of the class of 2000 please stand? Members, members of the Board of Education and Superintendent Nelson, the members of this class have fulfilled all the requirements for graduation from this school as set forth by the State Board of Education and the Board of Education of Fridley School District 14. In recognition of this achievement, they are entitled to their diplomas as graduates of Fridley High School. We seek the cooperation of all guests this evening in withholding your applause and, uh, and, other, and cheers until the entire class has been presented. Chairman Gordon Backlund, at this time, I will call the class of 2000 to the platform to receive their diplomas. Mr. Webb, would you please assist me with this? Okay, you may be seated except for the first row. Come on over, Kathy. Kathleen Abbott. Michelle Adams. Eric Adolfson. Jamie Anderson. Jessica Anderson. George Alexandru. <laughs> Sorry, George, I missed you. Steve Anderson. Adrian Austin. Larry Bale. Troy Balego. Jeremy Baller. Jill Basseron. Andrew Beecham. Katrina Beck. Rachel Behrens, Rosalind Bickford, Jessica Blake, Jameis Blood, Zachary Bobick, Susanna Bourne, Paul Boswell, 
Jason Braz. Melissa Breitkreitz. Brandon Brown. Joanna Brown. Patzoa Buxa. Aaron Bullard. Eric Burns. William Burns. Leland Burrow. Samantha Butera. Melissa Cable. Molly Cadwell. Jessica Carlson. Nicholas Chan. Rebecca Chavis. Janelle Kristen. Molly Christensen. Jamie Christensen. Robert Colladora. Christopher Kopikus. Andrea Cutler. Emily Dahlstrom. Amber Delwo. Nina Deep. Catherine Doyle. Colette Dubois. George Ellis. Jeremy Erickson. John Erickson. Christy Ewell. Sarah Evers. Ruth Phalink. Andrew Fink. Sebastian Fisher. Brian French. Anna Gerdeen. Ryan Gerhardt. Sarah Gibson. Marco Gobetti. Adam Grisula. Christopher Grittner. John Grittner. Michael Gronning. Dennis Hagen. Blake Hall. Amber Hamburg. Jennifer Haney. Andrew Hank. Christopher Hannanen. Elizabeth Hanold. Brian Hansen. Nathaniel Hart. Noha Hassan. Joshua Hebzimski. Brandy Hellerud. Gordon Hill. Sean Hilliard. Amanda Holmes. Krista Holtgren. Melissa Hughesby. Tan Nguyen. Michael Ingebrigtsen. 
Amber Jacquard. Scott Jackson. Adam Johnson. Nicole Johnson. Sarah Johnson. Kyle Joseph. Catherine Keck. Peter Keenan. Daniel Kelly. Jacqueline King. Marissa Clares. Samuel Kleismith. Vanessa Kwong. Danielle Landella. Simon Lung. Christopher Lindahl. Jaden Latecki. Nung Mai. Adam Marsh. Stephanie Matelski. Derek McCowan. Thomas Menke. Seth Militech. Tracy Miller. Sean Moore. Candace Morin. Michelle Moser. Alicia Namey. Kelly Nguyen. Tu Nguyen. Diane Nygaard. Michael Oakvik. Eric Olson. Shannon O'Toole. Benjamin Pardon. Matthew Perlick. John Tonkin Perry the third. Stephanie Peters. Lucas Peterson. George Pickler. Robert Plouts. Kale Proctor. Travis Puppy. Jessica Redmond. Jeremy Reichel. Andrew Resch. Raquel Rebel. Rebecca Roy. Adam Roseberg. Eric Rosek. Michael Rue. David, David Sorella. Jason Sostad. Galen Sabat. Nicholas Schaff. Aaron Shivsky. Jacqueline Schley. Jeremy Schmidt. Carl Scholl. Jonathan Schrupp. Mary Sapansky. Amanda Seibel. Luke Simon. Rihanna Simone. Elizabeth Schostrom. Katie Scotton. Alexa Skirka. Clifford Smith. Jennifer Smith. Lee Smith. 
Becky Snow. Michael Sorensen. Alexis Steinberg. Ian Stifel. David Swenson. Jonathan Thielen. Brian Thompson. Tiffany Thompson, Daniel Thorson, Faye Thronson, Amanda Tachik, Sammy Vagovich, Anthony Tucido Warren, Brian Watson. Dennis Weaver, Eric Weidman, Aaron West, Emily Wyden, Anthony Williams, Gitanya Williams, Jonathan Wilson, Jeremiah Winarchik. Adolphus Wu. Christy Zelmer. Ladies and gentlemen, the class of 2000.